Welcome to Senior High School Math Series. Let us have optimization using calculus. And this will be part one of two parts. In here, we're going to discuss maximum and minimum function values. Let us begin with some definitions. Let f be a function that is continuous on an open interval i containing x sub 0. We say that x sub 0 is a critical point of the function if f prime of x sub 0 is equal to 0 or f prime of x sub 0 does not exist. That is, the function has a corner or a cusp at the point x sub 0 f of x sub 0. We say that the maximum occurs at x sub 0 if the value f of x sub 0 is the largest among all other functional values on the interval i. That is, f of x sub 0 is greater than or equal to f of x for all x element of the interval i. We say that the minimum occurs at x sub 0 if the value f of x sub 0 is the smallest among all other functional values on the interval i, that is, f of x sub 0 is less than or equal to f of x for all x element of the interval i. We say that an extremum, or that is the absolute minimum value or absolute maximum value of the function occurs at x sub 0 if either the maximum or the minimum occurs at x sub 0. Let us have some examples. Find all critical points of the given function. Given f of x is equal to 4x squared minus 2x plus 5. Here is our suggested solution. Note that f is a differentiable function for all real values of x, so the critical point will occur when f prime of x is 0, that is from the definition. Hence, from f of x, we find its derivative f prime of x, and that is equal to 8x minus 2. From 4x squared, that is 2 times 4, 8x. The exponent of x is 2 minus 1, so we have 8x. The derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. Hence, we have f prime of x is equal to 8x minus 2. Again, the critical points will occur when f prime of x is equal to 0. So we equate 8x minus 2 is equal to 0. And from here, we get 8x is equal to 2. Dividing both sides by 8, we have x is equal to 2 eighths. Simplify, x is equal to 1 fourth. Hence, x is equal to 1 fourth is a critical point or the critical number. Let's have another function. f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 15x plus 2. The same as in example letter A, f of x is a differentiable function for all values of x. Then we find f prime of x, that will be the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared Derivative of negative 2x squared is negative 4x. And then the derivative of negative 15x is negative 15. So we have f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. The critical points will be obtained at f prime of x is equal to 0. Hence, we equate 3x squared minus 4x minus 15 is equal to 0. We will extract the roots of this resulting quadratic equation by factoring, and that is 3x plus 5 times x minus 3 is equal to 0. Equating each factor to 0 from 3x plus 5 equals 0, we get 3x equals negative 5, and x is equal to negative 5 terms. From the other factor, x minus 3 equals 0, we have x is equal to 3. Hence, 
x equals negative 5 thirds and x equals 3 are critical points. Let's have another one f of x is equal to x minus 3x raised to 1 third. Here is our suggested solution. From f of x, we get f prime of x. The derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of negative 3x raised to 1 third is negative 1, that is 1 third times 3, or 1 third times negative 3, x raised to 1 third minus 1, the exponent becomes negative two-thirds. Simplifying this expression on the right-hand side, we have f prime of x is equal to x raised to two-thirds minus one all over x raised to two-thirds. Notice that when f prime of x is equal to zero, or when we equate f prime of x to zero, we get x is equal to one. That is from x raised to 2 thirds minus 1 equals 0. Also, f prime of x is undefined when x is equal to 0. From the definition, the critical points are x equals 0 and x is equal to 1. Let's have another one f of x is equal to x raised to 5 fourths plus 10x raised to 1 fourth. Here is our suggested solution. Finding the derivative of the function, we have f prime of x is equal to 5 fourths, that is 5 fourths times 1, x raised to 1 fourth, that is from 5 fourths minus 1. Plus the derivative of 10x raised to 1 fourth, we have 10 times 1 fourth, that is 5 halves, x, the exponent becomes 1 fourth minus 1, negative 3 fourths. Simplifying this expression on the right hand side of the function, we have f prime of x is equal to 5x plus 10 all over 4x raised to 3 fourths. When f prime of x is equal to 0, we have x is equal to negative 2, that is equating 5x plus 10 over 4x raised to 3 fourths is equal to 0. Notice that the domain of the given function is the interval 0 to positive infinity. Hence, x equals negative 2 is not part of that interval. Therefore, x equals negative 2 cannot be a critical number or critical point. We have f prime of x is undefined when x is equal to 0. So, x equals 0 is the only critical point of the given function. Let's have another one. f of x is equal to sine x cosine x. Here is our suggested solution. Simplifying the right-hand side of the function, we have f of x is equal to 1 half sine 2x. Since 2 sine x cosine x is equal to 2 sine 2x, then we have sine x cosine x equals 1 half sine 2x. Getting the derivative of this function, we have 1 half times the derivative of sine 2x, that is cosine 2x times the derivative of 2x, that is 2, using the chain rule. Therefore, f prime of x can be simplified as cosine 2x, as 1 half times 2 is equal to 1. Since f prime of x exists for all values of x, the critical points are those for which f prime of x is equal to 0. So we have cosine 2x, equals 0. 2x has the general solution 1 half pi plus k times pi can be simplified dividing all terms by 2 as 1 fourth pi plus 1 half k times pi for all k element of the set of integers.
This time, let us proceed to some important theorems. We have Fermat's theorem. Let f be continuous on an open interval i containing x sub 0. If the function has an extremum at x sub 0, then x sub 0 must be a critical point of f. Next, let us have the extreme value theorem. Let f be a function that is continuous on a closed interval a, b, then the extreme values of f always exist. Then they occur either at the endpoints of the critical points of the function. We're going to use these theorems to find the extreme values of the given function on the interval a, b. By Fermat's theorem and the extreme value theorem, the extrema of a function can be identified using the following. First, solve for the critical point or the critical points of the function f using, of course, the definitions on the first slides of this presentation and the two theorems. Get the functional values of all the critical points in the interval a, b. Get the functional values of the endpoints of the interval a, b and compare the values. The highest one is the maximum value while the lowest one is the minimum value. Let us have some examples. Find the extrema, that is the minimum value and the, or the maximum value of the function in example 1a over the interval negative 1, 1. Here is our suggested solution. From example 1a, we have f of x is equal to 4x squared minus 2x plus 5. And we already have the critical points for this function. x equals 1 fourth is a critical point, And the endpoints negative 1, positive 1. Solving for f of negative 1, we have... 4 times negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 5 and that is 11. f of 1 fourth that is 4 times 1 fourth squared minus 2 times 1 fourth plus 5. f of 1 fourth is equal to 19 over 4. And then f of 1 is equal to 4 times 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 5. f of 1 is equal to 7. Comparing the values, we have the maximum value at 11, and that occurs when x is equal to negative 1. And the minimum value is 19 over 4, and that occurs at x is equal to 1 fourth. Let us have another one. Find the extrema of f of x is equal to x raised to the fourth power minus 8x squared plus 16 on the closed interval negative 1, 4. Here is our suggested solution. From the given f of x, we find the critical point using f prime of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 16x. Since the function is continuous at the closed interval negative 1, 4, we can equate f prime of x is equal to 0. And from here, we have 4x cubed minus 16x is equal to 0. Extracting the roots of this cubic equation, we have x is equal to 0, x equals negative 2, and x equals 2. And since x is equal to negative 2 is not on the interval negative 1, 4, then x equals negative 2 is not a critical point. So our critical point or numbers are x equals negative 1, x equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals 4. Finding the function values at these values of x, f of negative 1 is equal to 9, f of 0 is equal to 16, f of 2 is equal to 0, and f of 4 is equal to 144. Comparing all the values obtained, we have the maximum value 
144 and that occurs at x is equal to 4 and the minimum value of the function is 0 that is when x is equal to 2. Next, let us find the extrema of f of t is equal to t plus 5 all over t minus 3 over the interval or the closed interval negative 5, 2. Here is our suggested solution. Let us find the critical numbers or points from f prime of t is equal to using the quotient rule we have t minus 3 minus open close parenthesis t plus 5 over t minus 3 squared. Again, this is using the quotient rule in finding the derivative of a function. Simplifying, we have f prime of t equals negative 8 over t minus 3 squared. f prime of t is not equal to 0 for all t in the closed interval negative 5, 2. So the critical numbers are the endpoints of the interval, x equals negative 5 and x is equal to 2. Solving for f of negative 5, we have 0 and f of 2 is equal to negative 7. Therefore, the absolute maximum value is 0 at x equals negative 5 and the absolute minimum value is negative 7 at x is equal to 2. Let us have another one. Find the extrema of g of x is equal to 2 sine x on the interval negative pi pi. Here is our suggested solution. The given function g of x is equal to 2 sine x. The derivative will be 2 cosine x. And since the function is continuous over the given interval, then we have g prime of x is equal to 0 equating the right hand side of the function g prime of x we have 2 cosine x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1 half pi plus k pi for the general solution our critical numbers will be the endpoints of the given closed interval negative pi pi and when k is equal to negative 1 we have x is equal to negative pi over 2 and when k is equal to 0 we have pi over 2 these two are in the interval negative pi pi finding the function values g of negative pi is equal to 0 g of negative pi over 2 is equal to negative 2 and g of pi over 2 is equal to 2 also, we have g of pi is equal to 0. That is substituting pi, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, and pi to the original function. g of x is equal to 2 sine x. From these values, we have the absolute maximum value at x equals pi over 2, and that is 2. Also, the absolute minimum value is negative 2, that is when x is equal to negative pi over 2. On part 2 of this presentation, we will have applications involving absolute extremum on a closed interval. That will be all. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more math lessons. Thank you.